What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your man Chaz Ellis once again. So you ladies wanna keep your man happy? I'ma give you some of the secret ways Stuff you don't always hear about, things that guys may not tell you or they may not even know about themselves, but these are gonna be some of the secret ways to help you keep your man happy, keep him with you at the crib. One of the biggest ways to keep your man happy is by stealing his independence. Damn, bro, I just wanted a sandwich. I appreciate you though. You the real MVP. This is how you keep a dude wanting to stay with you and almost having no choice. The greatest power in the world is in servitude. The reason why is because when you do for others, you make them dependent on you. People are not dependent on people they do for. That's why if you are the person having somebody do for you, you are called a dependent. Your kids are dependents. People who are not contributing financially are dependents. If you take somebody's independence, that is you taking over some of the tasks that they would normally do. So even if the dude is giving you the money, if you're the one paying all the bills, that means that you now have access to all of the bills. That means you are now in a position to control the money, even if he's the one making it. And he probably doesn't want to go back to paying his own bills. Now, I know a lot of guys probably learn her for mom or somebody else always sign your own checks, always pay your own bills. Yeah, that's because if somebody pays the bills, then they will be the person taking your independence. It's just like if you go to an office and you see the person who's the most powerful in any office. Who is that? It's not the CEO. It's not the president. It's the CEO or the president's secretary. It's always them that you have to go through to get anything. I remember when I used to work in the jail the most powerful people in any jail, and anybody will tell you this, is the ladies who are in charge of the equipment. Since the higher ups don't know how to work the equipment system, like they don't know how to go uh, acquisition stuff and things like that, they usually don't know how to do it. They don't know what's down there. They have no idea. You have to go through the ladies that run the equipment area. And a lot of times, if you're not cool with them, they'll make you beg, they'll make you wait forever, which is why I would always get cool with them first because I recognize where power really is. The guy will be happy as a clam even though you are completely in charge. He may not know where anything is in the house. He may not know how to do anything, but he'll be happy as heck, generally handing over a paycheck and just letting you take control of the whole situation if that's what you want to do. One of the biggest things you can also do is show out for friends and family. I'm not talking about show out in that other way. I'm talking about show out in a good way. When you have get togethers and you bring in the dude his plate, what it does is it makes his friends and family say, dang, he got a good woman. You got a good girl, player. You got a good one. That's the kind of thing that actually will make them stick up for you. When you don't do those types of things, even if they don't say nothing in that moment, whenever you two have a conflict, they're not on your side because they don't really see where you've actually made a bond with him or you actually seem to be on his side or be with him. But if you show out for family and friends, even doing a little extra stuff for them to just show, hey man, I wanna be a part of this family. I wanna be a part of what y'all got going on. It makes those people want to vouch for you that much more. It makes them wanna fight for you and your relationship that much more because they see it as being good for him. To keep your man happy, you gotta be a cheerleader. Fire cracker, fire cracker, sis, boom, bye. It's hard enough to try to accomplish your goals out here in the world without having somebody at the crib either being unexcited or shooting holes in everything you try to do and everything you try to accomplish. People are gonna seek out somebody who believes in them. That's only natural. A lot of y'all talking about, me and my man broke up because he cheated on me, because he went and got with somebody else. But the story you may not have told was when he told you about his dreams, his goals, his aspirations, you turned your nose up or you turned your head the other way didn't pay attention, didn't seem to care, or you may have outright told him he's not gonna be able to accomplish it and just to give up. Whatever it is you may have done, and a lot of times that's what pushed the person into somebody who would be a cheerleader. I know you want somebody to feel bad for you. I know a lot of times we like to play victim, but you gotta look at what you did in the situation also. I'm not saying that's always the case, but sometimes it is. To keep your man happy, you gotta make it special, whether it's in the bedroom, whether it's the food you cook, in every possible way. What a lot of y'all like to do is do a carryover from your last relationship. Well, here's what my last dude likes, so you better like it too. 
Nobody want to play somebody else's paused game. They want a relationship that's tailor-made for them. Just like you want one that's tailor-made for you. You don't want somebody else giving you somebody's old ring or something like that. You don't want to move into somebody's old house. You want to have your own new stuff. So why do you think he want the same thing the other dude got for Valentine's Day? Why do you think he wants you to do all the same things in the bedroom you did for the other dude? He wants some of his own stuff. He want a tailor-made relationship. Don't make your favorite dish or the thing you cook the best what the last dude liked the most. You got to make it what he likes. He's not going to feel like you did anything for him if that was your default, if that was you was already doing for somebody else. And I know a lot of y'all ladies like to try to lie and try to fool people. It doesn't work. People can tell how easily you eased into something. People can tell that something is your default, especially when they ask you to do something that they recognize isn't your default. Like for instance, you make sweet potato pie because that last dude likes sweet potato pie. You're like, I got you on a sweet potato pie, babe. Boom, you start making it. But when he say make carrot cake, I ain't trying to learn no recipe for no carrot cake. I ain't got time for that. He start recognizing, okay, the last dude likes sweet potato pie, and that's why you cooked that. You're not going to make something special for me. You're not going to learn something for me to make me happy. In order to make a man happy and want to keep being around you, you got to know when to give a brother some space. Some of y'all just like to be all up under somebody until you no longer want to be around them. Then you're like, get off of me. But you got to know when to give them their space, not just whenever you got something to do, but when they got something to do. If they talking to their homeboy on the phone or they watching a game with some of their friends or they want to go play ball or something like that, let that man have his space. Stop trying to shame him out of it. What you on the phone with another man for? Like dudes don't talk on the phone. They don't have no business calls of just friendships. What you doing watching the game for? Why you watching the game? You a grown man. Spend some time with me. Spend some time with me. Well, if you over here acting like that all the time, a person doesn't want to spend any time with you. If you complaining all the time, all up underneath them, they don't have a chance to miss you. How can y'all talk about anything if y'all always together 100% of the time? You got to give a dude the time to miss you, to wonder what you're doing. And lastly, you got to study his interests. Understand what he actually likes. You'll be surprised how much you can build a strong relationship with any person by just having a good understanding of their interests. I remember one time I went to a job interview and I saw that there was a picture of Magneto. You know, that's the dude from the X-Men. Um, I saw that that was on the wall. What I did was I was like, man, I remember that one of my, my dad's cousins, he's my cousin also, but uh, he's older than I am, so he's more like an uncle, you know what I mean? He gave me like a stack of comic books, and that was the first uh, comic books I had ever gotten. And I remember like reading them and stuff like that. And um, so I, I kind of started liking Marvel and stuff like that back in those days when I was a kid still. So I was like, man, I wonder what, you know, I wonder if, you know, if he liked the X-Men and if that's his thing. You know, so I, I asked him about it in an interview. Just, you know, just a throwaway question. Me and him got to talking about uh, X-Men. Me and him got to talking about uh, what what was my favorite character and what I thought about Wolverine, who I thought would win in a fight between Wolverine and Spider-Man. You know, we just got to talking. It was, it, was, it was crazy. But dude didn't even look at my resume and hired me on the spot, bro. <laughs> he hired me on the spot just because we could talk about something like that. And I remember working there and just talking to him about movies and comic books and stuff like that. Most of the time, you know, not having to work half the time, you know, because I was in there talking to him. He just wanted somebody he could be cool with, you know what I mean? So understanding a person's interest a lot of times is a key to being able to have a really good close relationship. That's not even just boyfriend, girlfriend. That's boss, employee, um, co-worker. That's anything. That's group you know, whatever. So whenever you get an opportunity to broaden your horizons, that shouldn't be a chore. That should be something you try to do. Anytime I meet a person, I try to talk to them about whatever it is they're interested in, whatever it is they do. Because I want to learn about it. If you're a truck driver, I want to learn everything I can from you about driving trucks. I'm not going to drive a truck because that's not really like something I like to do. I'm not even the greatest driver. I ain't, I'm not even going to hold you. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not even the greatest driver. But I do like to learn about stuff, even if it's not something that I would really that I would really do or something like that, because now it's something that I could talk to someone else about. Now it's something that I could um, be able to relate to somebody on. They may not know that I know about that. They may be like, what? 
it's plenty of things that people are surprised that I would even know about because I, I learn from people. I've always been a student of the human condition and a student of uh, just human beings, really. And you should be like that with your man. If you're going to get with somebody, get to know a lot of stuff about him. If he got certain interests, hey, he like football, he like baseball. If he likes comic books and comic book movies or whatever, whatever it is he might like. If you start getting to know those things and understanding them and being able to talk to him about them, you'd be surprised how often he includes you. It don't mean you got to be included every time, but you will start getting included more often. All right, hopefully I was able to help you out. Once again, it's your man, Chaz Ellis. Make sure you like and subscribe and share this video with somebody else. Also go to the ChazEllisProject.com. Check out some of my master classes where I break down the game for you so you understand how to accomplish your goals in relationships, life, whatever it is you're trying to do. It's your man, Chaz Ellis. Peace.